WordPress is they just install it and start building the website without going through the settings. And the settings are really important that you go through the settings and make sure that the website is set up the way you want it to be. And there are a couple things that will be very notable that you will see change when you set it up properly. Um, one of them is the time. The other is the permalinks. And both of those come through the settings. So in the dashboard, the very last option in core WordPress when you're just starting out is the settings. And I recommend people go to the settings right away and look at what is here. The first thing to do is to make sure that the site title is set up to whatever you want the site title to be. And so I have 2022 puppies. Maybe I don't need the year in there. Just maybe I want puppies and dogs. OK, so it just gives me the option to make changes. The tagline is um, whatever you want it to be. Um, just do it. Um, for Nike, um, I'm loving it, for McDonald's, those are taglines that help brand your company. And so that is what you want to do here. So the thing I'm going to type in is learning and loving, okay, your dogs. So learning and loving. Okay, then this would be the URL of the website. This would be the administration address that you're going to put in. You can have anybody register on your website. So you could have a website where people register before they can comment. The small or the lowest rule that you want them to use is a subscriber. You want to set your language, whatever the language should be. The time zone, you have the availability to look at time zones in from different parts of the world. I'm in the Midwest, so Chicago works out really well for the time zone. Um, it is also UT zero, I think, um, minus six. And then you have the date format. And so I actually like the numeric date for month, day, year, and then your time format. So whether you want the uppercase or lowercase PM, or if you're doing a 24 hour time period, and when does your week start? Um, does it start on a Sunday? Does it start on a Monday? When do you want the week to start for the website? So that's the very first things that you will change. I will be very um, specific about talking about this admin email address. This is the email address that will be used to send you any information about um, changes that need to be done, updates that need to be done, security information that needs to be done on the website. So that email should be a correct email when you're building a website or once you're done building the website, you want it to be to that correct website or sorry, that correct email so that the website can notify you if there are problems. So that was general. So that was settings and general. Now we're going to go to writing. Writing is very important. We went ahead and created some categories under our post in a previous video. You can go back and look at the post video and we talked about post categories. Categories are a high level um, way to just kind of get a little more SEO uh, traction on your website. So to do that, uncategorized is not a very good term to use on a website. So you want to select something that can be used across all posts. It can be changed and it can be removed, but the default post category should be something that gets you a little bit of traction on your website. The post formats, this is very theme dependent, whether you will use these post formats. And so I would recommend that you check out your theme and see if any of these formats work with your theme. For most themes, standard will be just perfectly fine. You don't need to make a change to that. If you want to have emails become posts on your website, you would be sending out the email blast to a ma mail list for like MailChimp or Constant Contacts or Web or one of those email types of 
host and they would send out via your subscription list. What this is, is telling you what mail server that email user would be on. This would be their username and password, and then you would put in what you want most of those emails to come to the website and be added into your website as a post. This should not be a email that is a personal email. This should not be an email that is a personal email because for every email this email gets, it would add a post to the website. And so personal emails, you don't want all of those there. So go ahead and save changes for that. Then reading. Reading, this is where you can actually set up your home page settings, and this also can be done with a customizer. If your theme does not have a customizer, you can come to the reading settings and set it here. The pages have to be defined. If the top option is selected, your home page or the page based on the URL or your domain name that you use to access your website will be your post page. So just you want to be very aware of that. The home page or the static page allows you to have a static home page and stat other static pages and then create a page that will be the page that all of the posts will be driven to. So it's like a container that holds all the posts. Blog posts, how many blog posts do you want to display? Anywhere between um, one in 100 or 99, um, you can put in there. Um, you have the option to put in as many posts as you want. I do recommend that the post page should show, you can determine whether it's going to show excerpts or if it's going to show the whole post. And that also is going to be very dependent on the theme. But if you are very wordy on your posts, you may want to have less posts displaying. If you're not so worried, wordy, you probably want to um, use the, the larger number of posts. RSS feeds are syndicated feeds. That's what an RSS feed is and you can determine how many you want to display in the RSS feed. For each of the posts in the feeds, do you want to show, and this is in the RSS feed, do you want to show the full text or an excerpt? If you select excerpt, it will just show maybe an image and a first paragraph and just a few little bits of information. The next item, search engine visibility. This discourages search engines from indexing. This just says that the bots or crawlers that crawl your web page for each of the search engines are discouraged from indexing your website at this time. If you uncheck that, then it will let the bots or say it's okay for the bots to do that. Um, right now, since we're building, I always end a build stage um, discourage the search engines and then go ahead and save your changes. YouTube video that I just played um, talking about RSS feeds. I think RSS feeds are like a really good thing to work with and I do use Feedly. Um, Feedly is the one that I use to aggregate information. It helps me either share something with other people or have a link like I may have read an article and I'm quoting from something somebody said, and I can link back to their article. It just gives me a good way to aggregate a lot of good information in one area, opposed to having to go out to everybody's website and check and see if they've got something new. So RSS feeds are good. Well, you can do that. You can actually set up the way people can look at your website, so, or how you're going to post to it. So changes. Um, the next thing would be working with um, discussions and whether you want people to have discussions on your website. So this is a very personal thing when it comes to a website. Are you going to want people to comment on your website? So discussions, like I said, are very personal. You're going to have to read through these and decide what you want. I will give you just a few of the things that I think are very important. Um, 
you probably want to know if people are linking to your website from other websites, which is really nice. It's called linkbacks. You want linkbacks um, back to your website so that people are doing it, but you want to have valid linkbacks. You don't want to have somebody saying, oh, I can get you 500 linkbacks and they get people that have nothing to do with the content that you're writing. So I'm writing about puppies and they're giving me linkbacks from big pins. Not, not even close. Those two don't even come together. So that is something you don't want to use that black hat kind of thing. So, so you allow if people are going to comment or not comment, and then you're going to allow if they can ha have link backs or links in your post or from your post. The other thing is the comment settings. Um, can an author um, fill out um, the name and email? Do you need them to do that before they can comment? Um, the user must be registered, logged in. This is whether you're going to have a membership site. Another thing, you're going to have to have a plan and decide whether you're going to do that. Um, are you going to close comments after so many days? If you have content that is very focused on this time and in 14 days, it's going to be stale. Okay, closing the comments makes sense. Okay, you're having an event and you're doing something and you're talking about that event. This post and those comments in 14 days, yes, maybe still. If the event or something doesn't have evergreen content in it. So you might want to close it. But if you are creating a website with a lot of evergreen content, meaning that the content is good today, it was good a week ago, it was good. Seven weeks ago, it was good. A year ago, and it's going to be good five years in the future. You may not want to close the comments because people may ask questions about whatever you're talking about. I have a friend that has a post out on his website talking about how to get five star ratings in Google and how to set up your Google um, reviews. And that is good content. It's been good content and it's been out there. I know it's been out there at least five years. So he's got some really good evergreen content that he has out there. So he doesn't want the comments closed because he wants people to say, hey, I will show you how to do it, but if you don't wanna do it, contact me. And so they can contact him either via the comments or they can contact him via his contact information that he has all over the post. So it's really kind of interesting. So that is very important. Um, are you going to um, have options like cookies that you're going to capture cookies, um, allowing this, like I said, a lot of this is very going to be very personal. Are you going to let the threads be nested deep? Um, have you guys ever been on a forum or you've ever been where somebody's commented? And I'm talking about puppies and maybe I'm talking about gentle leads for puppies and then somebody gets into um, harnesses okay and they're talking about the harnesses so they're not even talking about gentle leads again and then somebody gets off into um, we're talking about dog harnesses but then somebody moves over to horse harnesses and and then it just gets completely off topic and then somebody starts talking about what well, leather's being used and um it, that's against um um PETA, and then it gets very controversial, and you're like, wait a second, I started off talking about gentle leads, and here we're talking about PETA? Um, how'd that happen? And so you can actually determine how deep nested a conversation can get because you don't want things to get too out of hand, and you don't want to be monitoring that. I mean, you don't want to be saying, people, no, this is not what my, my website's about. So definitely thinking about that and where the conversation is going and where it can leave. Um, breaking the comments into multiple pages. There are some people that comment and they will write a book. I'm not kidding. These people love to write. They get out and they just start typing. They put out their thoughts and they just bleed all over um, your comment pages. And you have to decide if there's people like that that are going to be commenting on your website or that are following you, you have to determine how you want to break up the pages. Um, and then the comments, do you want the older to newer or newer to older? I would say newest to oldest is probably the best option because the comments, probably the newest to oldest are going to be more relevant. 
Um, how are you going to allow people to comment? Can anybody comment? Do comments have to be held for moderation? That means somebody has to work and somebody has to pay attention to the comments as they're coming in. Um, comments must be approved. I definitely agree with that. Comments should be approved. You shouldn't let comments just go out like social media. Your website is more of a brand and it represents you. Social media is social media and it is not yours really. It is owned by the social media that you're working on. So it is, it can be your brand, but it is something that they allow comments right away in there, but you may have the chance to respond or work with that. So just be aware your, your website is your brand and it should be you. So you should have more control of what's being said on your website versus what may be being said on social media. And then how to approve comments. Um, just be aware that some people will put out a really nice comment as the first comment and it is a bot, okay? And I did have that happen. I had somebody put out, this is a really nice article. I appreciate it and I got a lot out of this. So I approved the comment. I thought that was a very nice comment to put out on that article. The next day, because I had this checked, it was near Black Friday and they put out a uh, a comment that had, I swear, 15 pages of links back to places that could buy, you could buy things from. So it was just a bot. It was just a bot looking for somebody that would approve the first comment and then allow them to post a second comment without having to be viewed. And yeah, this one had just a ton of links in it. So it was really one of those things I had to turn that off really quickly. Um, but I learned my lesson. You learn your lesson. Um, Moderating comments, how many in the queue, um, who gets the comments or who moderates the comments. It just depends who you have working on your website and um, who will be the person that is going to watch those. Which avatars are you going to allow people to display? Uh, that is going to be based on your brand. My brand, I've never thought of thinking anything uh, above G is really important that important for an avatar. So if somebody wants to put something on my website, I really don't want it to be above a G rating. Um, I want anybody to be able to see it. Again, very personal. Discussions are going to be very personal and it's going to be very specific to your website and what you want them to see. Okay, media. You have to have media plopped into the media here. Um, so we have posts, media, and pages. The media is images, it is video, it is audio, it is PDFs, it is text documents, it's anything that you want to pull into your pages or posts, okay? As the actual image, as the actual video, or as content that you want somebody to be able to download. So media is very important because media is one of the things that can be fairly heavy on your website. Media also can be one of those things that can be um, put up in too large of a format. And where I tried to pull in two megabytes, people bring media into or images into their website. They're anywhere between four and 10 megabytes. And if you're putting up three images per post and you're putting up a post every other day, you think about what's gonna happen in 10 years. You're just gonna have way, a huge, huge website. I am working with a client that has a website that is nine gig. Okay, that is a big website. And that's because of the media they hold on their server from all of their images and all of the content that they pull into the website. So you have to be very aware. Media can be very, 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 very heavy. So I normally, because the theme is going to determine the different sizes it's going to give you, this really doesn't do you a whole lot of good unless you think you're going to resize images in WordPress. I'm of the school of thought the images should be sized and your plan should be done before you bring the images onto your website. So all of these should be set to zero 
and your images and everything that you put up on the website should just be the size that is the largest size that would be seen on desktop. Okay, and then other than that, it shouldn't be um, any bigger. That being said, some people go out here and set these and then they put up one image and they may use it three or four different places. That That's up to you if you wanna do that too. Um, I have always gone through with most of my clients um, to keep their images sizes down and just set all of these to zero. If you have a live site, I would definitely talk to your developer before you do this because they may be looking for some of these images based on where they put information. Okay, so just be aware. I'm telling you this is a brand new website. Um, you can do it here in the lab, but if you have a live site, please don't do this on a live site until you talk to your developer because they may be looking for these images to pull them different places on your website. Um, the images should be organized in um, month and year based folders. That is very helpful to go back and find it, but there are some plugins that you can use to sort your images that are really nice that help with sorting images. So go ahead and save that. When I looked at my permalink, remember when I went and I looked down the side of that, that post and the permalink was question mark slash P something. I don't know if it was equal or whatever. That is because it was grabbing the PHP code. That is the key, how it sh shares or how it stores the post in the database. That question mark P equal one, two, three is how it stores the post. It numbers each of the posts with that question mark P equal and a number. That doesn't give you very much description or somebody very much description to work with it. So it is better to pick one of the more descriptive examples here. Some people like to have the year, the month, and the day. Um, if you're writing lots of posts and you have a lot of really good content, that's probably good. It does show that it is a current post. Um, I'm more of setting the post name to just being the post name. And if I want to show the date, I can show it as one of the values um, underneath the title of my post, opposed to showing it in the URL of the post. So this is the URL. So this would be the website name and then the post name. So where I had the one that was um, post schedule, um, this would actually be called um, localhost post schedule. Okay, so that would be very helpful. And you do have other options, again, especially this is something worth looking at if you're going to do e-commerce because you're gonna maybe want categories and then post types um, with e-commerce. So you'd have more options here if you had an e-commerce um, plugin in there. And the very last one here is the privacy. The privacy does allow you to create a privacy policy page. And I do recommend that whoever you're creating this for, or if you're creating it for yourself, um, make sure that you are covered legally if you're capturing any type of information. If you're capturing names, phone numbers, emails, you have to tell people what you're going to do with those, okay? What are you doing with that? So terms of service and privacy policies are really important on websites. You do want to make sure that you let people know if you're capturing any data on your website, what you're going to do with it. I have only one client that I can say they do not use a privacy policy because via their standards, they have to go through a very strict policy in um, <clears throat> just their clients and patients that come into them, they have to let them know the whole policy in a whole written document and the people have to sign off on it before they can do anything transactional. So um, they, they have it all in a paper format and they don't have it here where somebody goes and reads it at the bottom of a website. But yeah, you can create a privacy policy page. Um, you can use a privacy policy page and you can just click this, but there is a privacy policy in terms of service plugin that I use and it keeps it up to date um, pretty well. 
but there is also a huge industry right now of people going through and working with websites to make sure their privacy policy and their terms of service is um, via the legal standards that it should be. Okay, so that's all of